Welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live, and today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Thoughtful Expressions Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the pretty bundles from Stampin' Up's brand new January to April 2024, I almost said 2023, I can't even believe 2024, what in the world? <laughs> how did we get here? I don't know. Um, 2024 uh, mini catalog. So this catalog just started yesterday, ordering just opened up for it yesterday. So um, I thought I'd go ahead and just, you know, make something with one of the new products and, you know, hopefully you like it. So, all right. Hey, Sally, thanks for joining today. So this is the card we're going to be making. It's actually pretty simple. It's obviously these are just stamped images that I colored, die cut, put a little bit of layering on it, and uh, the card is all done. So it's pretty, pretty easy to do, um, but it's such a pretty stamp set. I just wanted to show it to you. So, all right. So this is Thoughtful Expressions, and um, it's got some really good sentiments in it. Love that it's got a mixed font sentiment, which, you know, that's, I don't know. I just really like those. I like the way they look. Um, again, just some kind of general good. There's an enjoy your day, so you can turn it into a birthday card or something like that if you wanted to. Um, and then there's also one that would work for a sympathy card and you're in my thoughts and that sort of thing. So um, it has a coordinating die set that has got um, the open dies will cut out the stamped images. So your flowers and your hummingbird um, will all be, you can cut those all out with that. And then there are some nice, just kind of coordinating dies that you can use for lots of different stamp sets, um, which I love. So, oh goodness, I see Amy's here and Karen and Gina Marie and um, Danette and Tracy and Gwen, Rob and Linda, Debbie, Mario, uh, let's see, Gwen, if I didn't say, Nancy, Pam, everybody, thanks for hopping in today. <laughs> and I appreciate it. So, oh, and Daryl's here as well. So, um, so this these dies actually are kind of just some general ones that you can definitely use with the stamp set, but these are good dies to have. They cut out lots of sentiments and other images that they have in the Stampin' Up! catalog. So, And then there are some little accessory pieces. I did use a couple of the leaf pieces. I did not use this little flower, um, but pretty much, yeah, all the other little leaves I did. So it's a really nice die set, really great stamp set. And again, it's bundled together in the current mini catalog, so you save 10% if you buy them both together using the bundle um, pricing on it. I'm trying to remember if there's a, I don't remember if there is a whole suite with this one. I should have probably grabbed the catalog, but <laughs> I didn't look. So um, I don't know. I don't know the catalog inside and out yet, and I probably should. So, um, hey, Margaret, thanks for joining today. Uh, one other thing that I did use on this for my sentiment, I cut um, a banner from uh, this Lemon Lolly cardstock, but I used one of the stylish shapes dies, and it's the kind of the larger of the banner dies that is here on this uh, die set. So... All right, let me set the dies over there. and Hopefully nothing will go tumbling. A couple things really quickly before we get going on the card. Right now I am offering double running shoe reward points. So I generally do that when I kick off, or when we kick off catalogs, just because, you know, I'd love to give you a little extra bonus. If you're going to order from me, I appreciate it. So um, through January 10th, if you place an order of $50 or greater from me, you're going to get double running shoe reward points. And, um, those work. Normally you get one for every $50 that you order. When I'm doing double points, you get two. And um, when you get to eight points, you get a free $40 order of your choice from me. So yay. So you're going to get double points if you order um, $50 or greater during uh, the first week of the catalog. And on top of that, you're going to earn a free celebration item from Stampin' Up. So yay, at least one if you order $50. And for every $50 increment over that, you're going to earn more celebration items and more points from me. So uh, there is a suite. Okay, I thought there was, but then I was going to say that, and then I couldn't remember, and that's terrible. <laughs> so thank you, Gwen, for, for letting me know. So, um, hey, everybody, I see Carol's here, and uh, thanks for hopping in from Arizona as well. A couple of other new things. Um, Stampin' Up's got two new kits that they just put out. They're starting to do two kits in the kits collection every month. So there are some new ones, and they're kind of fun. This one is Rock Legends, so if you have anybody that's into music, um, they will love this kit. And then there's the Panda Friends kit which has got some cute little pandas and obviously this one I think you could do valentines with or you could just do it as a general you know friend card or whatever um the kits these are actually both of them make eight cards and um they're pretty inexpensive they're only 14 dollars which is kind of cheap <laughs> at least as far as I'm concerned I think that's a great price for a kit um 
what else? The, this card is not a standard size one. This one, what is the finished size on? Eight and a half by three and a half. So um, this one is not a standard A2 size card, but definitely still mailable. Um, it includes the envelopes, all the adhesives that you need. There is not a stamp set in either of these because everything is pre-printed for you. But anyhow, so there's some cute little kits. So definitely take a look at those as you are um, putting in your orders. And there are lots of other kits out there as well. These are just the two newest ones that Stampin' Up! has added. So and then also don't forget to take a peek at the online exclusives, which um, they have, there's some things that are holiday related out there. There are some things that are um, spring. There's kind of, it's a wide variety of things. I don't know, four or five pages of stuff uh, that is only online. It's not in any catalog. It's not tied to any catalog. So if you see it available out there and you like it, go order it um, because yay. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll be able to get it while it's there and then it may go away. So um, so there are some um, pretty things. We've got the uh, Meandering Meadows Sweet Collection. There's the Little Fluffiest Friends and like I said, lots and lots of other things. So um, hey, thanks for joining from Iceland and hey Drew and Barbara, thanks for hopping in as well. And then don't forget again, celebration is going on right now. Uh, stamp it up for every 50 that you order, $50 of merchandise in the U.S. I know it's different outside the U.S., but in the U.S. for every $50 that you order, um, you get to pick a free item from the celebration brochure. And you know who doesn't love free? There's designer paper. There are some gems. And actually, I used a couple of the things um, that are the free items on my card today. So one of the free items that you can get is called Softly Stippled Designer Series Paper. It's actually a 12 by 12 pack, and it's got um, 12 designs, six sheets, six double-sided sheets. There are two of each. So yeah, there's 12 designs, 12 pages, 12 by 12. So 12, 12, 12. Um, it's a huge pack of paper, or a good size pack of paper. And this is one of the uh, designs in it. And you can get it for free with an order of $50 or greater during celebration. So um, I use the pool party side, obviously. And uh, there is another bundle called Stippled Roses in the uh, mini catalog that actually coordinates officially with this designer series paper. But, you know, if you're like me, you can just kind of use it whenever you want. <laughs> I don't do many things that coordinate. And that's why the sweets, sometimes I can't remember whether there's actually a sweet that goes with things because, um, yeah, I don't always play, you know, have everything all mixed together just from the suite. So, all right, so there we go. I'm adhering a piece of the designer series paper to a piece of basic white cardstock. And the basic white cardstock measures about three and five eighths inches wide. And the designer series paper is about three and a half inches wide. And I've cut it to card front size, so it should be five and a half across the top. So start with that, and I am not going to put that on the card front just yet because I'm going to wrap twine around it kind of as we get towards the end. Um, so I want to make sure that um, I don't accidentally tie or stick it down and then have to rip it all apart. So I'm going to do a little stamping to get started, and I'm going to stamp my little hummingbird and the little flowers. And these, again, are from the Thoughtful Expressions stamp set. And just going to ink it up here with Tuxedo Black Memento ink. So, hey, Trev, thanks for hopping in, and Karen as well. So, glad you're joining today. So, oh, yeah, Karen, I already said hi to you. I don't know why I'm saying hi again. You were here earlier. <laughs> so, all right. So, stamping that. Again, Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And then I've got the flower image. And I did get black ink on my fingers. So, um, got the little black, or the... Um, flowers. We're, we're stamping those in Tuxedo Black Memento ink as well. Just going to stamp those here on my basic white cardstock. There we go. All right. Um, I did color one set of flowers ahead of time, so we only are going to have to do, you're only going to have to, you know, sit and watch me <laughs> do this once. So, which I'm sure by the time we get to the end of it, you'll be like, thank goodness we only have to do this once. All right. I'm going to start by coloring the little hummingbird, and I have got Old Olive Light and Dark Stampin' Blends markers that I'm going to start with. And I actually went and looked at, I knew generally the, um, these are ruby throated, I think is what the name of these officially are. I, um, I knew generally the colors for those, but I couldn't remember exactly which colors were where. So I went and actually looked them up online and I think that I got the colors in the right places. Um, for those of you that are bird people, you can feel free to correct me if I'm coloring anything wrong, but <laughs> I tried to get it as close as I could um, to the colors that look like they, you know, when I was looking at the photos of them online. And I knew that they were kind of generally green and uh, with obviously the, the red on the throat, but I couldn't remember what colors the rest of the bird was. And then I looked and I'm like, oh, that looks like crumb cake to me. So <laughs> that's, that's what I did, so. All right. 
Um, this is one of those images that really you don't have to take a ton of time to color it because it's sort of hand drawn and um, so yeah, it's supposed to look a little a little messy, so don't stress out about that. So hey Rosie, thanks for hopping in. And um, oh like just hear me say hello more than once. So I sound like a total lunatic is what you're saying. <laughs> so all right, going back in with a little bit of the dark. Um, old olive and I'm just going to kind of again just add in a little bit of color right over the top of where it's already shaded so the nice thing about a lot of these images is that um, Stamp It Up really helps us on the coloring side of it um, it kind of shows us where the shading should go so then you can just add a little bit of the the um, uh, almost called it like Old Olive, I don't know why I was having such a moment trying to come up with what the name of that color was. So add a little bit of Old Olive uh, light and kind of blend them together a little if you'd like. And add a little more shading here over the tail. There we go. Okay, I think we're gonna call that good on the Old Olive. Uh, the next color I'm gonna grab is Chrome Cake and just going to use that for the kind of the ends of the wings. The ends of the wings, I may be coloring these the wrong color. That was just based on the photos that I was looking at. I couldn't remember whether they were green all the way through their wings or not. When I looked at the photos online, they looked like they were had a little bit of brown through the wings. So feel free to correct me if I'm coloring them incorrectly. And then I'm going to come in here and color the little belly of the bird with crumb cake. And when I looked at them online, there was a little spot underneath the, um, oh, and I colored the green too far up, but that's okay, because I'll color over it with the red. Um, it looked like there was a little spot of white on their bellies. So I left a little spot of white, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. So, all right. And I'm gonna again come back in here with a little bit of the dark crumb cake in the spaces where it looks like there's a little bit of shading already. Oh, cover them with a wink of Stella to make them sparkle. That'd be nice, most definitely. So, all right. And again, just going to come in and blend the shading together with the light crumb cake going back over the top of it. All right, there we go. So has everybody got their orders in, at least their first orders in uh, <laughs> from the new catalog? I know I, yeah, I put in a bunch of orders yesterday, so... Don't think it matters what color. Okay, all right. Well, that's good. Then, then I didn't mess it up, is what you're saying. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going to come back in here. I've got light cherry cobbler. And I did color the green a little bit too far down, but that's okay. Because like I said, the cherry cobbler color, colors right over the top of the uh, old olive, and nobody will know that it's there but you and I. So, all right. I'm just adding a little bit of dark in there. Again, there's a little bit of shading on that one. And I realized I forgot to color the little beacon. Not that there's much to color, but wanted to color that in with a little bit of crumb cake and the bird is all done. So super easy. Um, now we're going to work on the flower a little bit. And I've got light and dark lemon lolly that we're going to be using to color in the flowers. So I usually start with my light when I'm using Stampin' Blends markers. And I always recommend if you have not used Stampin' Blends markers before and want to um, kind of get a little practice at it, Definitely grab a floral image. They're way easy to color. And in nature, you know that they come in all sorts of shades and flowers, as beautiful as they are, very few of them are actually completely perfect. So if you have your, you know, do your coloring and it doesn't come out exactly perfect, it's nature. So there, <laughs> you, you know, like I said, only you and I will know what color we were supposed to make it. So, all right, there we go. Just coloring in a little bit of, um, light lemon lolly so he is adorable or she i think the he's are the ones with the ruby throats i think that the the female ones are all green maybe i can't remember i know it's usually it's like that all the time isn't it where the the female of whatever bird or whatever animal it is they're usually the more bland ones and the male ones have all the color and you know all the pretty things on them <laughs> which to me is totally backwards it should not be that way so but, you know, I don't get to dictate. So, all right, um, adding in a little bit of uh, dark lemon lolly, just again, kind of in the areas where it's already shaded and Stampin' Up! has done um, a good job of showing me exactly where to color and where to shade and just doing a little bit of blending and making sure that I've got all the, the um, area colored in that I want to have colored in so I don't miss anything. All right. 
flower centers, I used pumpkin pie Stampin' Blends markers. So, all right, and again, just kind of swirl it over the center. Yeah, I used to have hummingbird feeders back when I lived in Atlanta, Georgia. I had hummingbird feeders there, adding a little bit of dark pumpkin pie in, um, and then I'll just blend the two together. Uh, but it's been a while. I've, I've seen one or two hummingbirds up here in New Jersey, but I've not seen a whole lot of them, so I don't know that if they spend very much time here or not, or if it's one of those where they just migrate through at certain times of the year and then go away, go down south where it's, you know, warm, where the same people live, not like us crazy people that live up north. <laughs> so, all right, then I'm coming back in here with Old Olive, and we're just going to color in the um, leaves. And again, I'm using Dark Old Olive, or Dark light old olive to start with and then I'll add some dark is what I meant to say. So starting out with the light. Um, and again usually when I color anything whether it's watercoloring or coloring with blends or you know watercolor pencils or whatever usually I start out with the lighter color because it's always easier to layer on more colors. Um, it's not always as easy to take the colors away. However, Stampin' Up! does have a color lifter for these blends, which helps a little if you get a little overzealous and, um, you know, end up coloring something way too dark or, you know, you color something you didn't want, you go out of the lines, whatever, that sort of thing. They have a little color lifter, which helps kind of to shove the color back in the line and mute it a little bit. So um, just add in a little bit of dark old olive in around the leaves. So, okay, put a feeder out and see. Yeah, I should do that actually. Um, and I know the recipe and all that, that it's, you know, the water and the sugar and that you shouldn't put the food coloring and all that stuff in it. So I know the basics of hummingbird stuff. Um, but the other thing is we have a lot of um, critters here, bears and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, that seem to be attracted to hummingbird feeders and uh, raccoons and all those things that maybe I don't necessarily want hanging around the house. But <laughs> it is a good idea to put them out. So, all right. So... I'm done coloring. So like I said, I did one ahead of time so you didn't have to watch me do it all. Now I'm just gonna die cut. So I'm gonna bring my dies back in. Again, these are the Thoughtful Expressions dies. And there's one that fits perfectly around the little hummingbird and one that fits around the flowers. So I'll be off screen for one second, doing a little bit of cutting, so. Go. I think I got them set. I'm running through the die cutting machine. Oh, almost threw that on the floor. All right, there we go. So, look forward to seeing the birds come through. It, it is fun to watch them. Like I said, I do remember that, and that you know, you put the feeder out like a week or two before they're supposed to be there, and then hope that they showed up. And <laughs> so, you're in western New York, and you have hummingbirds from early May to like, are they here really that long? I guess I haven't, uh, perhaps I need to put some feeders out. <laughs> so, I just assumed they kind of migrated through, and I didn't think they stuck around here. I know they were down south. Um, we always had them down there, but all right, so I'm using glue dots to stick the card front together. And I'm just going to take the first set of flowers and we're going to glue dot those kind of up here in the upper right. And then I'm going to take the other little set of flowers and we're going to glue dot those down on the lower left. So kind of making it be on the opposite side. Whoop, did we get, I think I tore a chunk of the um, backing off on that one. I don't know. Anyway, all good. Gonna layer this one kind of down here like that. And then I did do some die cutting ahead of time with the greenery pieces. And I'll show you which dies I used. So I used, oh, come on little hummingbird, get out of there. This die, this die, and this die. So the little three greenery pieces here, and I cut two of each. And I'm just gonna tuck those right around um, my other die cut flowers here. So, um, and I usually use glue dots for this sort of thing as well because I've tried liquid glue and I just make such a darn mess with it that I try to use glue dots anytime that I can. <laughs> so I don't like liquid glue. So um, yeah, I definitely do not put food coloring in them. I knew that it's just sugar and water and you put it in a red feeder and I remember all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I couldn't remember or I didn't know whether we, we had them here or not. So 
All right, I'm gonna take this one and kind of tuck it in here underneath my flowers. There we go. And it's okay that it's hanging off a little because we're gonna have the rest of the card front to cover. I just don't want it hanging off the top. And then I'm gonna take my other little die cut leaf and we're gonna tuck that one in. Come on, there we go. Tuck that one in right up here. There we go. And I got, that one's the one I need to make sure that I don't have too far up on the top because I wanna make sure it stays on the card front. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other little sets of leaves here. Just gonna take this one and put a glue dot here and tuck it in around this floral image and not stick it to my fingers, at least hopefully not. All right, so we'll take that. And again, it's okay that it hangs off just a little bit off the edge. I don't care about that because the rest of my card front will be there, so. Hey, Melanie, thanks for hopping in. So you have a lot of them in uh, hummingbirds in Arizona right now. That's pretty awesome. Like I said, I, and I've lived in Arizona. I actually lived um, on the south side of South Mountain in Phoenix area. <laughs> for several years, but I guess I didn't, I didn't even know that they were there and, or I didn't pay attention one or the other because <laughs> that was when I was much younger. Hey, I got a chunk of the backing on that one too. I don't know. Eh, it still seems sticky. So I think we're going to go ahead and go with it and tuck it underneath this part of the flower here. There we go. Let's stick it down. And then I'm going to wait on the hummingbird. I don't want to put that on until I get my sentiment on so that I make sure that I have it placed around the words. Because, um, you know, sometimes I stamp and things don't end up in exactly the same space. So I'm going to grab my little piece of cardstock for my sentiment. And this is Lemon Lolly. And I don't know, it's just a chunk of cardstock that I had left over. And I've got the Enjoy Your Day um, sentiment from the Thoughtful Expression stamp set. And Versamark ink. And just going to ink it up here and then stamp it on the little piece of lemon lolly cardstock. And then, I know you can't see that because I actually can't even see it <laughs> right now. I know we'll be able to see it once the uh, embossing powder gets on it, but now I've got white embossing powder from the Basics embossing powders, and I'm just gonna pour it over the top and then tap off the extra, and there, hopefully you can see, maybe. I don't know, lighting is kind of hard. There we go, I think you can see it there. So I've got that on there. And I'm going to close that up before I start up my heat tool because I will blow embossing powder everywhere if I don't. So the Stampin' Up! heat tool, if you've probably heard me say this before, has uh, two settings on it. There's a level one setting for drying. So if you're doing something like watercoloring or something that takes a minute longer uh, to dry and you want to speed that up a little, you can use the level one setting. And then there's a level two setting for heat embossing. So it does get a little bit hotter and actually will melt the embossing powder. So just giving my heat tool a second while I'm, you know, chattering away here to uh, get heated up enough that I can heat emboss with it. So we'll give it a whirl here and turn it towards the paper. And once it turns kind of shiny and bright white, hopefully you can see it doing that on the screen. You want to keep the heat tool moving along on your, when you're embossing so you don't burn anything. Um, there we go, because you can definitely burn embossing powder and how do I know I've done it? and it doesn't look very pretty, all brown and dull. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab this uh, large banner die from the, the Stylish Shapes dies. And it's probably a little bigger than what I needed it to be for this sentiment, but um, this is for a sketch challenge and it kind of had a big chunky sentiment thing on it. So that's why I picked this die and figured it would work with it. So um, hang on a second and I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine. I'll be right back. And there we go. And then I'm also going to take glue dots because I'm trying to keep the sentiment a little bit flatter on here. I'm going to take glue dots to stick my sentiment onto the card front as well. Um, I thought about putting dimensionals under it, but I knew I was going to be tying a little piece of linen thread around it. And I wanted to make sure that I, you know, didn't have it too thick for the linen thread and it didn't look weird. So um, as far as placement of the sentiment, you can put it on whatever it makes you happy. I kind of stuck it here towards the top. Again, it was just following the sketch challenge and where they had it placed on that. And then I'm gonna grab some linen thread and we're gonna wrap it around here. Hey, Robin, thanks for hopping in. So I'm glad you were able to join live. So you got all kinds of them in uh, 
Canada as well. So that's cool. I guess they are, must be further north than I ever realized. I thought they kind of just migrated through here. I didn't realize that they hung around, but apparently they do, and I need to read up more on birds. I did forget my scissors. Hold on. I got a rabbit. Thankfully, it was close by. Feeling like I'm all prepared, and I'm really not. <laughs> so again, just use the little linen thread, and I'm tying a knot first to start with. That keeps everything in place and um, lets me kind of get it tied and looking decent, wrapped around the card front. And then I can make the bow over the top of that, and it gives me a little, little more freedom to you know, maneuver the bow around how I want it to be. So that's usually how I do it when I'm tying with linen thread. When you're tying with a thicker ribbon, it, you don't always have the luxury of being able to tie a knot first. But um, when you're using linen thread, it's thin enough that uh, usually you can get away with that. Oop. Come on. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to take uh, my little hummingbird, and we're just going to tuck it in here around, try to get it around the words, and so I'm not covering up any of the words. And I also tried to aim it so that the little beak was towards the center of the, <laughs> the flower. And again, that's one of those where, you know, depending on how everything is stamped, you may or may not get lucky enough to have it actually work that way. And if it doesn't, that's fine. As long as it's generally pointing towards the flowers, I think everybody will get it. So, all right, taking a couple of my little half stampin' dimensionals that um, I've chopped up here and sticking them on the back of the, the little hummingbird die cut. And again, I'm just gonna try to pay attention as I stick it down. I wanna make sure that the, the wings are down below the um, sentiment and that the little beak is generally pointed at the flower center. And then we're just gonna stick it down with dimensionals to the card front. My original card base is actually, I prefer the top fold cards, so I usually make most of mine that open at the top. I know not everybody loves those, so I usually try to show you anytime I can. Um, side fold usually works with 99% of the cards that I make, you can make as a side fold card. So my original card base was four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half across the top. Um, this card base that I'm using today is actually uh, eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter down the center. So it works with either one. Um, like I said, I usually, you know, my preferred is the top fold, but I know that not everybody loves those card bases. So I usually try to show you that you can do it either way. And just taking a couple of the little half stamp of dimensionals and sticking them around here on the back of the card. Oop, come on, there we go. Picking them off and then this was probably the most difficult thing for me um, putting this card together was trying to get this lined up and straight. <laughs> when it's the full size of the card front, that's something that I struggle with. So I try to put it on my grid paper and that helps me to kind of line things up, hopefully, and get it centered and straight. <laughs> and so that's, to me, like I said, that's the most challenging part of this card is getting the card front on straight. The other bonus with Stampin' Dimensionals, when you're putting this type of card together, and you have a layer of Stampin' Dimensionals, is if you get it stuck down, you're like, whoa, that looks terrible and it's all crooked and crazy. You can take your paper snips and slide them in sideways and basically just chop the Stampin' Dimensionals like that <laughs> underneath your card and lift the top off and then put new Stampin' Dimensionals on and stick it down again and nobody knows. <laughs> so that's my little tip. Anytime you're sticking on a layer with Stampin' Dimensionals and it gets on crooked or doesn't turn on the way that you want, don't try to pull it off like that because you'll rip everything. But if you take your paper snips and slide it in between the layers and cut the Stampin' Dimensionals, nobody will know but us. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, last thing that I added on the card front, and these are also some of the free items from Celebration. These are the opaque faceted gems, and they are Calypso Coral, uh, Pecan Pie, and uh, Pool Party. So worked perfectly with the colors that I was using today to add a little pool party on. And these, again, are Celebration items, so they are free with an order of $50 or greater that you place during Celebration. So yay, again, who doesn't love free? And uh, little gems, yep, like those too. So, and self-adhesive, so yay. <laughs> all things that I love. So there we go. The card front is all done on that. Just adds just a little bit. They're a little sparkly. They're not kind of over the top, but just adds a little something extra to it. Inside of the card, I kept pretty simple as well. And this is just a little piece that I had trimmed off when I was making my card front. This is about a half inch wide, and it is that softly stippled designer series paper, which is also one of the free items. And... 
gonna go ahead and put that across the bottom of a piece of basic white cardstock. The cardstock is cut to about five and a quarter by four. And this is, I don't know, it's probably a half an inch-ish. I'm not gonna say it's exactly half an inch because sometimes I don't trim it exactly the right way. Um, by about, that was probably four and a quarter to start with, but um, I like having a little extra room to play with so that uh, I can always trim it down. It's a little harder to add on if I've cut it too short, so. All right, then doing a little stamp and seal here to finish up the inside of the card. There we go. All right, and then folding it in half, running the bone folder down the crease here to make sure we've got a good crease on it. And that's it. So a super easy card. And like I said, if you're newer to stamp and blends, definitely consider picking up this Thoughtful Expression stamp set because it's really easy to color and you can play around with it. And the hummingbird, you can turn to whatever color you want. If you want it to be all green, all brown, all whatever. Um, I know that, I do know that they come in other shades. These are just the ones that I'm familiar with. So, <laughs> so that's why I went with this one. So, um, so thanks again for joining me today. Uh, all the details will be posted on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. And uh, I will link up directly to the blog post tomorrow morning when it goes live around 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. You have to have, you need to have, yeah, it's, it is a good one. So you're definitely going to love it, Cindy. Have fun playing around with it. So, um, all right, so there we are. So we're done for today. I will plan to be live around 2 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday and again around uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time next week, Friday. And for those of you, if you're like me, in this crazy snowstorm that's supposed to be happening this weekend, stay warm, stay safe, and I'll keep my fingers crossed that the power stays on for all of us. Yikes. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be, they're saying 5 to 8 inches of snow for us, which I don't really look forward to, but... Hopefully it'll warm up next week and then it'll be gone. <laughs> so, all right. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, we will chat with you all soon. And again, if you have questions, let me know. And details will be on my blog tomorrow. Chat with you all soon.